Chris Ramey guided the University of Oregon's campus development for nearly 30 years. I asked him to reflect on what it was like to be the university architect and how he views the future. Well, let's see. Um, it's, it was nothing like what I thought it would be like. I got into the business because working with the developers, I was in the room and the people on the other side of the table were dressed better, which I thought meant they made more money than I did, and they were calling all the shots. I said, okay, I'm wasting my time on this side of the table. I need to get on that side of the table. <laughs> and the first opportunity that came up was a university yeah. you know, owner's rep, and I thought, okay, well, whatever. I'll, just the first one, I'll find out what people, well, sure. I was perfect because I grew up in the, in the town, I grew up in the faculty, so I knew all about that. And you, then, I, then once I got into it, not only was I well suited for it, because I was articulate, I could describe the problem, I had the technical skills, because I was a licensed architect at that point, it was marrying these two things together, and I had leadership skills that I'd just grown up with. So that's sort of a tripart thing that's hard, I think, to get. So I was well suited for it, so it was exciting from that point. The other thing that was rewarding for me on kind of two levels, you know, growing up in the 60s is kind of the hippie-ish culture there, working for the betterment of the whole is rewarding, and having a client whose, whose product is really the dissemination of knowledge and the creation of knowledge, and it's a public client, I mean, those are some really rich things you can get your hands around. You go home at night and go, I did something good for the state of Oregon because I helped create a, a system. I'm not creating the knowledge, a system that supports that. And then the best part about it was that because you're working at a university, you can do stuff that's crazy. You can do process-based planning because your client will tolerate that and sometimes your client will demand that in the case of sustainability on our campus or, or transportation or accessibility. We were always being pushed to the edge of can't we do better, can't we do better, can't we do better with the university. We have to show everybody why this is a good idea and we should try it, even though it doesn't make any sense necessarily, we should try it out now and that was very stimulating. The, the pace of the work was frightening. Um, we, we, in my, in my uh, tenure, we built 45% of the campus. So it was clearly the largest building boom ever. My predecessor built about half a dozen buildings in 15 years, and I built half a dozen buildings in 15 months. It was ridiculous. Now, what was fun about that is that we were, during the, the, reset, the recession, we were the economic driver for the county in our end of the state. Right. Um, and we can clearly demonstrate that. And when you graph that and put it on show it to people, it is really remarkable. And that statistic is, is really incredible. 45% of the campus was built. Under our, under our tenure. Now time will tell whether we did a good job or not. But that, those parts of the, of the job were, were fascinating and really interesting and very rewarding. Jim is you're building buildings that have a 100 year frame, the buildings themselves, so the exterior, the structure, and an interior that's maybe only got a 20 year lifespan. Because you recognize that in 20 years, it's a good chance you're gonna be in there and, got the whole thing because you changed your mind about what you wanted in the building. And I think we can, we can build smarter, we can build a lot more smarter buildings if we think of them that way, rather than every building is just this one-off thing and it's all it's specialized because that's what that particular dean wanted. And I just, uh, it's not gonna be. I mean, I think the, the sort of bigger picture fear is that emphasis on public education will evaporate. Uh, and the trend a little bit right now is chasing after research dollars and trying to stay in the Association of American Universities by having a certain number of researchers. And so they're out trying to chase faculty, they're trying to change their faculty student ratio, which is all good, except they're hiring researchers, they're not hiring instructors. And so my fear is that the value, the sort of way public education works in higher ed is just not sustainable. And I don't have the answer. So in a way it's that wonderful product that I wanted to be a part of, I'm just not sure that, that that's the public is gonna support that over time. And I don't think the private sector can do it and tuition is maxed out. I don't people, we really created a, a two-class system now. You can't, if you're in the middle class, I don't think you can get access to higher education like you could before. It's a very difficult thing. So 
what worries me more is the sort of institution of public higher education rather than the architecture of the campus, which is probably what I should be worried about. Um, so, you know, for in terms of the architecture of the campus, I just worry that the people that come after us won't have the same values that we did. And it's like, anybody, you want them just to keep doing what you were doing, because of course what you were doing was the right thing. So how could there be anything different? And I think institutions are like battleships, they're not gonna change that much. And the place is, you know, is so rich. What, what's unique yeah. about that campus is the place, and the place that's been made. And that's the brand, that's a big part of the brand, it's about place making. And that's just not gonna, you could never, you, you couldn't change that. It would be, it would be too hard. So it's almost like what we've created now, the only way to continue to change and grow is to work within that system. Um, nobody's gonna come in close up an axis or build in a big open space or clear cut the trees. That it's, is your hope? It's not gonna happen, no. That's not gonna happen. So I don't need to worry about that. Well, my, my hope is that there is an appreciation for higher education and public education that the, the voters uh, begin to realize that and put in place the resources to support our public higher education at the level in which it should be. That would be one, part A. And part B would be then the leadership on the campus understands that responsibility and is responsible about how they spend that resource. <clears throat> so it's not necessarily all put into salaries, but it's put into the, what is the quality of life for that student? What is that learning experience all about? How does that, how does that manifest itself on the campus? So there's a resource there, but then it's applied in a way that really carries that idea forward. And I think, you know, I think there's some, there's some opportunities there. It's gonna be a long road, but I think there's some, some great opportunities there. This conversation was recorded June 28th, 2016 in Seattle, Washington.